Kaishin Okami here at Color Out Anime Fest 2023 with... Hey everybody, it's Advent Nebula, long time no see. And we are interviewing... I'm Kyle McCarley, I'm a voice actor. For people who might not know who you are. Uh, you, know. you might know me as the voice of 9S in Near Automata, Alm and the Gatekeeper in Fire Emblem. Uh, Mob and Mob Psycho 100, Mikazuki and Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans, etc. and so forth. So, when you're not in the recording booth, what do you like to do outside of it, outside of obviously being a massive hockey fan? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I also play hockey in a beer league that I, I got into that uh, in my adult life. I did not play as a kid because I grew up in a part of the country where there is no hockey. It doesn't exist in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. Uh, but I, I play hockey either one night a week, and then I also am a big board game fanatic. I love board games. Everything tabletop, really, because I've, I've just gotten into D&D a little bit as well within the past year or so. It just reminded me of when we play Settler's Gatan, somebody always ends up with all the sheep. Yeah. My board <laughs> game is a Hero Quest. I Hero grew, Quest. I grew oh. up on it in the 90s, and then when Hasbro released it, I was like, I have to get it. I was going to ask, did you back the, the oh. Kickstarter campaign? Oh, with yeah. All the, yeah. And he just you... got from his parents his old Hero yeah, Quest. Yeah, my parents set. just sent me nice. my old ones. That's so awesome. now I have them both to compare and contrast. That's awesome. That's really cool. So you have voiced a lot of iconic characters over the years. Has anyone made a big impact on you? Oh, I mean, they've, I, I won't say they all have, but many of them definitely have, have impacted me. I think far and away the biggest impact that, that any of them have had on my life has got to be 9S in Nier Automata. That, that game doing as well as it did, the story that it, that it told, uh, just like really resonated with me while I was in the booth working on it and then when it came out and fans loved it it, it just kind of springboarded me into a new new era in my career which was really really nice. For me Nier was my favorite game of that year and still seven years later and with the anime out now that's become like my favorite game and I just go revisit so it recently I'm just like okay as an essential crisis the video game yet why do yeah. I love this so much yeah yeah it's so good and I since since playing through Automata I then went back and played the original Nier then Drakengard 3 and then uh, uh, Replicant when that came out uh, and I just, just seeing I, how I everything love, connects together I love the whole franchise brain go, yeah I love this it's so I love good. this it's so good give me more Yoko Taro give yeah. me more yeah. that was me uh, during COVID with the Yakuza franchise okay. I got into that and just played through all the games and yeah. the judgments yeah I went, I, I went in reverse order, so... <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter going in reverse order. It doesn't order. really matter other than the fact that there's a lot of little Easter eggs that are like, hey, remember this, this thing from that? Or remember yeah. this character yeah, and how exactly. important they were in the previous yeah. game? <laughs> yeah, so, for us, we like to get together and look at it as teachers and just go like, what advice would you give to the youth on being themselves or out there exposing themselves to being an actor or a creative or something in their life outside of what they're growing up and learning? Well, it's, lived experience is probably the, the number one thing that you can, you can get to get better at creating art, I think. Just living your life and going through some hard times is invaluable stuff to, to have those touchstones that you can go, oh, I don't need to imagine what this feels like because I've been there, I've done that. That definitely helps. Uh, I think also leaning on other people is a big, a big factor. Like I, I for me, I think I, I struggled a lot in the early stages of my career because I, I wanted to do it all myself and that's not how it works. You, you have to, everybody needs help from somebody at some point. So don't be afraid to ask for help. The worst that can happen is somebody says no. Exactly. I mean, even for myself, I've learned from experience on that when I've transitioned to a new career recently. It's like, okay, every once in a while i got to ask these questions and get myself prepared for like, okay, I don't have the answers anymore like I used to. Right. Yeah, nobody knows everything. So. so you said that you struggled early on in your career. How do you feel you have evolved and have you listened to like things you've done before to now? Oh, boy. Um... <laughs> 
I, uh, I think, artistically speaking, uh, I think, uh, I think living life and, and going through some stuff has improved what I'm able to bring to the table as an artist. But I think also just, just in terms of like the, the business side of things, uh, I've gotten so much better at, at asking for help. I've gotten so much better at that aspect. I, it's, I remember uh, early days of my career, I kept like, I had this attitude of like, man, if, if just some agent would give me a shot, I'd be there and I'm, I'm totally good enough to, to compete with all these other people. So I'm just gonna throw my demos at these agents and someday somebody will pay attention to me. But I made the demos myself and they weren't as competitive as when I finally bit the bullet and spent the money on get, hiring a professional to produce my demos for me. I finally got agents to actually pay attention to me when I asked people on the roster, hey, can, can you refer me to your agent so that I can, so that I can get in the door? That, that helped a lot. Once I got with my current agent, uh, I, I slowly went from this mindset of like, oh, it's okay, I'll handle all of my scheduling myself and all of that stuff, to, to now, they have access to my Google Calendar. They handle all of it for me. It makes my life so much easier. <laughs> so I've gotten way better at just taking my hands off the wheel and letting somebody else steer a little bit. And, and it gives me the freedom to just do the acting side of things and let the business side kind of Somebody else takes care of that for me, which helps a lot. Well, that's good advice because not everybody can handle both sides of it if they're not business savvy. Having somebody that actually well, and you just don't have you, even if you can handle it, the, you, you run out of steam, you run out of time, you run out of energy. So it's it doesn't hurt anything to to have a team behind you helping you out. And with that is there anything you would like to uh, say to the fans of yours that are watching this for encouragement or something or some life advice you'd like to give oh gosh uh i will say this is i feel like this is patronizing advice but i, I think there's a kernel of truth in it so i want to say this prefacing with that happiness is a choice sometimes it is a much more difficult choice to make than others for sure but if you choose happiness and, and choose to find the joy in life and every, every possible opportunity that you can, life is going to be much more enjoyable than if you go around looking for things to complain about. So there's my life advice for you. And are there social media links that people can find you at? Yes, I'm uh, Kyle McCarley on Twitter and Twitch. Also, uh, I stream board games uh, at BNB like Airbnb, BNB Tabletop. It stands for Board and Barrel every Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so and much. And until time. next time, bye.